Today we will be starting off with uh, the second part of uh, innate uh, immunity and uh, so before we go into that we would uh, it might be a good idea to summarize some of uh, the main aspects of uh, the last lecture. Uh, the first is uh, the importance of innate versus adaptive. As mentioned previously, innate is a quick response, it is non-specific, it does not differentiate between different types of bacteria, it tells, but it tells the host that there is some sort of a, uh, invasion that has taken place um, and that is the most important thing. Um, it is an evolutionary conserved process and it is present in lower organisms such as Drosophila, horseshoe crabs, etc. So, it would be a good idea for uh, you to sort of think about where uh, uh, the Drosophila and horseshoe crab uh, were, uh, uh, were useful in the previous lecture. For example, uh, the use of uh, or uh, the identification of uh, toll receptors was shown in Drosophila and uh, uh, the, um, uh, the measurement of, uh, of lipopolysaccharide which is a potent endotoxin is used using uh, lysates from the horseshoe crab. We also talked about physical barriers that are important in innate uh, immunity, uh, for example, epithelial cells mucus. So, mucus that is produced traps these uh, microbes and uh, that is useful in sort of containing their spread. Um, there was also discussion on different types of cells, for example, neutrophils, macrophages, NK cells and dendritic cells. So, we will briefly go a little bit over them. Uh, neutrophils are one of the first cells um, that uh, the, the host uh, responds to uh, and they are the first ones to um, uh, arrive at the site of uh, pathogen entry. Um, subsequently, uh, they produce uh, chemotactic factors and macrophages are recruited. Macrophages are important in uh, processing and presenting antigens to, um, to T cells. Then you have um, natural killer cells which are important for what is known as antibody dependent cytotoxicity. Once antibodies are produced, these uh, um, target cells, um, they are also important for tumors. And dendritic cells are perhaps the physiologically most important antigen presenting cells which present uh, different antigens to uh, T cells and so you can turn on the adaptive uh, immune uh, response. Um, <coughs> we had discussed about uh, the fact that the innate uh, immunity modulates uh, adaptive uh, um, uh, responses and this is mainly seen in the use of microbial adjuvants, uh, microbial components in adjuvants. So, for example, complete prions adjuvant contains uh, um, uh, killed mycobacteria. And this was known as the immunologist dark secret by Charlie Janeway who, uh, who first propounded that the innate uh, components needed to be activated uh, to get an optimal um, immune uh, um, uh, adaptive response. And subsequent studies resulted in identification of toll like receptors um, that are present in host which, uh, which uh, recognizes specific uh, microbial components. So, TLRs for example, they contain this uh, external leucine rich uh, repeats and these uh, LRRs or leucine rich repeats are important for protein protein interactions and it contains an internal IL, IL1 receptor signaling domain by which the signal transduction can be done. We also discussed uh, the ways uh, by which LPS is detected um, and uh, the response by host. So, uh, LPS uh, binds to LPS uh, binding protein in the serum and this complex is, is transported, it is recognized by CD14 and um, um, TLR4 is important for recognition of uh, LPS and this complex alone cannot signal, it needs a signaling molecule known as MD2. Um, which is important in signal transduction. So, you turn on um, the cytokine response and you turn on an acute uh, um, innate uh, uh, response, which uh, is often uh, manifested in uh, with respect to cytokine release, uh, phago increased phagocytosis, um, killing of uh, target cells um, or pathogens, uh, etc. We also discussed an important part which is uh, septic shock and septic shock is, is quite prevalent um, especially in hospitals uh, are post infections uh, and uh, this is important because it uh, uh, you have an acute inflammatory reaction um, because of the presence of uh, microbes and uh, the host response is so strong that it often uh, leads to multi-organ failure, low blood pressure and sometimes even death. 
Um, so, it is important that uh, these aspects uh, are, uh, are, are, uh, are revised by you uh, before we move on to the next part. Okay. Um, so, we had mentioned the role about signaling pattern uh, recognition uh, receptors um, and the ones that we mainly discussed in the last lecture were toll like receptors. Um, now, there are two main types, there are others too, but the two main uh, signaling pattern uh, recognizing receptors are the TLRs and the nodes. So, what are the nodes? The nodes are the nucleotide oligomerizing domain, these are intracellular sensors. If you remember, most of the TLRs, TLR2, TLR4, etcetera, they are present on the surface. Some TLRs are present in endosomes for example, um, TLR9, but in case of nodes they are primarily intracellular sensors. So, they sense microbial pa uh, entry pathogens within cells um, and these are characterized by particular domains. So, nod proteins contain an n terminal domain which contains the CASP uh, domain or the caspase recruitment domain which is important in apoptosis and activation of uh, NF kappa B. We will discuss this important transcription factor NF kappa B subsequently. The middle domain contains the nucleotide binding oligomerizing domain and hence the name NOD um, which is important in self oligomerization. The C terminal domain contains the leucine rich um, uh, repeat uh, which is important for protein protein interactions. You will remember that DLRs contain LRR domain, but it is present on the external surface whereas in NODs it is present in the, in the C terminal um, end. Um, the association, the importance of NOD has been shown uh, with its association with uh, Crohn's disease which is an inflammatory bowel disease. Um, now, mutations in NOD2 uh, lead to um, uh, uh, have been associated with Crohn's disease which is uh, an excessive activation uh, uh, of uh, macrophages and T cells in the bowel. Um, one of the possible reasons for this is that the uh, that, uh, ha that uh, has been shown that NOD regulates uh, TLR2 uh, signaling. So, for example, in TLR2 knockout mice or mice that lack TLR um, uh, that uh, lack NOD, um, they secrete large amounts of IL-12 um, in response to to um, uh, TLR uh, activation. So, it is possible that NOD is playing a regulator of the TLR activation and in and since the mutations in NOD um, are unable to control this, it results in in uh, in a greatly exaggerated activation resulting possibly resulting in inflammatory bowel disease. There is also a reduction in defense, uh, defense in production which are important antimicrobial peptides um, in uh, these uh, in uh, in, in not to knockout mice and that may also uh, be important because as, as uh, previously mentioned um, that uh, the production of antimicrobial peptides is important in reducing the number of bacteria that is uh, present in um, the intestine. Okay. Um, there are other types of pattern recognition uh, receptors and two of the important ones are endocytic. Now, so these do not signal uh, by themselves, they, um, they are endocytic which means they will bind to complexes and these receptors internalize and clear off uh, these uh, bound ligands. So, one of the important ones is scavenger receptors. Scavenger receptors are particularly important because they might to, they bind to modified lipoproteins for example, um, LDL which is important in transport of cholesterol. So, so, um, they also bind to charge polyanionic ligands, bacteria, apoptotic corpses, etcetera. And this part is important because for example, if, when there is um, increased cell death, you want to remove of the dead cells and scavenger receptors may be playing an important role in these sort of uh, processes. <coughs> Um, there are also mannose uh, receptors that are present on macrophages um, and these recognize high mannose containing proteins which are present on surface of, uh, of microbes and which are then ingested by uh, the, uh, by the uh, macrophages. Okay. Uh, we will next be moving on to the complement system um, and the complement system has several functions. It is important in the control of inflammation, it is most important in the clearance of immune complexes. So, especially when you have antigen antibody complexes, they need to be cleared off and the complement system comes in place over here. Um, they are important in activation of the antimicrobial defense and we will, uh, we will see uh, parts of uh, that uh, subsequently and it is a major effector of uh, immunopathological uh, diseases. Um, so, there are different ways uh, by which complement can be activated. The most classical and well studied is the antigen uh, bound to um, antibody. So, you have antigen bound to antibody and this activates complement. Okay. Um, and this is useful in the body, it is also useful in for doing in vitro experiments where you want to isolate certain populations of cells, you have an antibody to a particular cell type uh, and you can use complement to deplete that uh, particular cell type. So, complement has, uh, has a variety of uses. 
Um, but in terms of innate um, um, immunity, uh, one of the ways uh, that it uh, plays an important role is through the alternate uh, uh, pathway where you have um, the activation of a complement protein C3B which binds uh, to certain microbial um, um, uh, uh, surfaces and then gets activated and remains activated and as a result of which the cascade um, initiates. The other way by which uh, complement can be activated is through the um, uh, mannose binding lectin which binds to, um, uh, to pathogen surfaces and we will discuss uh, these in slightly greater uh, detail. The important part of the complement pathway is that the proteins in the system act as an enzyme cascade. Um, so one protein gets activated in turn activates the other one and so on uh, until the uh, microbe is lysed um, and we will see that uh, somewhat uh, later. Um, so, here what is shown over here is the classical pathway. So, here you have antibodies and these antibodies have been produced against the microbes and these results in what is shown over here as antigen antibody complexes and these antigen antibody complexes are clumped together and then uh, complement binds to these and what it does is it results in lysis of the microbes. Um, and as a result of which um, this these antigen antibody complexes the, and the microbes are lysed. Um, and what is shown over here is the cascade as I was talking about. So, um, C3B is an opsonin which means it enhances the phagocytosis by coating. So, once C3B is coated on, on microbes it, enhance, uh, um, it enhances um, phagocytosis that's, that's, the, that's the process of opsonization. It also results in activation of the complement and you can see the cascade uh, leading um, to uh, the microbial uh, plasma membrane uh, loss um, or uh, lysis of uh, microbes. Um, there are other processes involved in here, my complement plays an important role in inflammation. So, it increases the uh, blood vessel permeability and um, the chemotactic attraction of uh, during phagocytosis. An important disease that is related to this particular pathway is the common opsonic defect uh, and uh, its relationship with mannose binding lectin, something that we had just discussed in the previous slide. Um, the mannose binding le uh, lectin um, it is a host protein, it binds directly to mannose n acetyl glucosamine that is uh, fucose uh, residues etcetera that are present on microbes and directly activates um, a complement. So, this is the third uh, part uh, pathway by which complement can be activated. What is uh, important is that uh, deficiency in MBP leads to common opsonic defect uh, that is an inability to phagocytose my, uh, microbes by neutrophils and this defect affects 5 to 6 percent of individuals which is fairly high and it is commonly detected in children with recurrent uh, infections. So, how was it discovered? What was found is that uh, neutrophils from patients who lack uh, MBL or have mutations in MBL were unable to phagocytose um, uh, yeast uh, which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, but the defect was reversed when serum from healthy donors was used in the same assay. So, there was something in the serum that was missing and subsequently it was identified to be mannose binding lectin. Okay. Um, complement receptors are important over here. The most uh, perhaps the most important one is CR1 which is present on erythrocytes or SCR stands for complement receptor and it is uh, mainly responsible for, clear, uh, for clearance of opsonized immune complexes. Um, CR1 amounts decrease in um, aged RBCs. So, as uh, uh, RBCs get old, these amounts decrease um, and they are also low in diseases involving clearance of antigen antibody complexes. Um, uh, uh, for example, systemic lupus erythromatosis and uh, that is again uh, something that uh, will be discussed in uh, the lecture uh, on autoimmunity. Um, CR2, um, uh, the complement receptor 2 is present on B cells and it allows for enhanced response to antigen. So, you can imagine uh, a situation with B cells and if you have uh, the antigen, um, uh, the CR2 complement um, and bound to antigen antibody um, and it is binding to B cells. So, it is internalized efficiently and this allows for better uh, presentation and activation of B cells. So, um, so, CR2 is important for enhanced B cell responses. Uh, CR3 uh, which is shown over here as uh, CD11B and CD18 present on it is present on neutrophils, NK cells and macrophages and it is important for phagocytosis and destruction of, uh, of foreign cells. We will see the importance of this particular subunit CD18 um, subsequently. 
Okay. Um, the other molecules that are important in uh, adhesion, um, in, in inflammation is adhesion. During the process of inflammation, um, adhesion uh, receptors increase. So, both receptors as well as ligands increase and this, this adhesion is important especially because microbes have to or, or uh, uh, neutrophils, macrophages have to travel to uh, different um, um, uh, have to leave the blood uh, circulatory system and travel into tissues where, where damage has taken place. So, uh, in order to do that, adhesion plays an important role um, by which they can, um, they can, they can, they can um, go to particular areas within um, the part where, um, where tissues are, are affected and adhesion receptors and ligands play a very important role in this uh, process. So, one important uh, disease uh, is known as leukocyte adhesion defici deficiency. And this results due to mutations in CD18, um, and um, and CD18 is is a common beta subunit. Now this com be, uh, this beta subunit, it's associated with different types of receptors. For example, uh, CD18 is important um, in CR3, which is a complement receptor 3. Here, CD18 is associating with CD11B. Um, alternatively, um, CD18 is also important for uh, LFA, um, which is important. Um, uh, in uh, which is an important adhesion uh, receptor. Here, the alpha subunit is different. It is CD11A uh, and which associates with CD18. So, you can see here that CD18 is common in, in both these two different types of uh, receptors, but the alpha subunit is different. The, so, so um, if you have patients that have mutations in CD18, um, um, uh, what it does, it, it affects proper cell surface expression and function of both a complement receptor 3 and uh, LFA uh, molecules. Okay. Um, what happens as a result of this is it results in defects in adhesion. So, as a result of which the cells will not be able to migrate to the affected area as a result of which diapedesis which is this ability to migrate is affected. Uh, um, and um, consequently patients suffer from recurrent skin infection pneumonia, septicemia, gingivitis which is inflammation of the gum, impaired wound healing etcetera. So, it shows you clearly uh, these examples are there to show you the importance of particular subunits in the innate uh, immune response. Okay. Um, there are other um, uh, other molecules that are important. So, FC receptors, FC receptors will bind to antigen antibody complexes and these uh, signal. FC receptors are particularly important into for example, in uh, uh, signaling um, during allergies. Um, then you have chemokine receptors which are required for trafficking uh, to different tissues or sites of inflammation. Um, the, an important chemokine receptor is CCR5 which is important for um, uh, entry of HIV. Um, in the last class, we had talked about uh, um, CD5 uh, um, positive um, B cells present in the peritoneum or Li1 B cells in the mouse uh, as they are known and these are often responsible for production of what is known as natural antibodies. So, these antibodies are produced you know in response to different types of microbial pathogens so on. So, it is naturally um, present and mice lacking natural antibodies are are 10 to 100 fold more sensitive than their wild type compartments in resisting infection by microbes. So, it clearly shows you that natural antibodies are also playing an important role in innate uh, immunity. An important class of proteins that play a response uh, in, uh, in innate uh, uh, immunity uh, is, are, are acute phase uh, uh, response proteins. These are these proteins are produced rapidly in response to inflammation and the liver is responsible for production of several acute phase proteins. An important acute phase protein is the C-reactive protein and it, it binds to um, phosphocholine present on dead or dying cells uh, and some bacteria in order to activate complement. Um, so, as a consequence of that, it binds to apoptotic cells in a calcium dependent method. So, CRP is important for of dead uh, dead cells and it is a way of which um, you know you are um, once the inflammatory reaction um, is over you are sort of down modulating uh, and getting rid of all the debris that is around. Um, it is a way the body has developed by which um, uh, dead dying tissue can be removed uh, efficiently. Hmm. Among the soluble factors uh, uh, that are produced during inflammation are cytokines and chemokines. Um, some of the important cytokines uh, are IL-1, IL-6, IL-12, TNF. 
Um, and in fact, TNF is a marker because it is um, um, so rapidly, it is uh, one of the quickest uh, or the fastest produced uh, cytokines during inflammation. So, it is often thought to be a marker for inflammation. Um, now, what happens often during signaling via the pattern recognition receptors, one of the consequences, one of the downstream consequences is our production of, uh, of cytokines which have a variety of effects. Um, um, also important is the production of chemokines and chemokines are especially the example shown is that of IL-8 which is important um, in attracting neutrophils uh, for um, um, during infection. So, um, um, the production of IL-8 attracts neutrophils to the site of infection. Okay, this so this slide depicts uh, the, the the main types of chemokines. You have the CC type shown by MCP Rantis and the CXC shown by IL-8, which is a neutrophil attractant. And as mentioned to you, uh, pre, uh, that uh, CCR5 is important in playing an important role in uh, HIV infections. So chemokines have several different uh, roles, and at this point, we will not dwell on this further than to show you that they play a variety of roles. Um, Cytokines and important uh, um, um, cytokines are um, known as interferons. Interferons, it, it, uh, it originates from the word interfere um, and uh, interfere because the interferons were discovered to interfere with viral replication. Um, so, in terms of antiviral immunity, uh, uh, the interferons uh, are, are known to play an important role. There are two main types of interferons, uh, type 1 which is uh, IFN alpha beta, IFN alpha, IFN beta um, or type 2 which is interferon gamma. And the type 1 interferon which is interferon alpha beta is involved primarily in antiviral immunity. It has other functions but its main role is it is very well known to play an antiviral uh, role. So, how does uh, the type 1 interferons function? There are several mechanisms that are known. One of uh, an uh, one of the important mechanisms is via the production of MX GTPases. Um, what uh, these GTPases do um, is um, they inhibit transcription in one case, but more importantly, they inhibit viral assembly. So they inhibit with the transport, uh, in, in, they interfere with the transport of viral uh, capsids. They also sort them to locations where they are not available for assembly. So the GTPases prevent or slow down a viral uh, um, uh, viral um, assembly um, uh, and uh, uh, viral assembly. Um, the other main uh, way by which is uh, through the production of this enzyme known as 2,5-oligoadenylate synthase. What this does, it binds to uh, double-stranded RNA and forms this 2,5-oligoadenylates. Uh, so, they adenylate uh, these uh, um, uh, adenylation uh, and as a result of which uh, this in turn uh, activates RNAs L and which uh, which degrades um, single stranded RNA and as you will uh, you will uh, remember that uh, um, these are important um, during uh, production uh, of viruses and often also for replication of viruses. So, this is and transcription of viruses. So, this is one way by which uh, it acts in the antiviral uh, manner. The other way is um, there is um, phosphorylation of eukaryotic initiation factor 2 as a result of which translation is inhibited and viral proteins are not efficiently made. Uh, apart from their strict antiviral, antiviral uh, roles, uh, type 1 interferons are now shown to be important in other processes in modulating host immunity. One of which is the immaturation of dendritic cells, generation of cytotoxic uh, uh, T lymphocytes and in some cases they have been shown to increase the survival of T cells. Uh, type 1 interferons are of use clinically. For example, type 1 um, or interferon alpha along with the antiviral drug ribavirin is used to treat um, um, liver diseases uh, with, uh, with uh, chronic hepatitis B infections. Um, uh, the second uh, case is interferon beta, it is used to treat multiple sclerosis. Now, how does it do? Uh, do uh, in this particular case, uh, interferon beta is anti-inflammatory and uh, reduces um, um, T cell migration to affected neurological uh, tissues. Um, also, uh, it increases the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. The other um, um, interferon is the type 2 interferon, interferon gamma. Now, interferon um, alpha beta is produced by all different types of cells whereas interferon gamma is produced mainly by T cells and natural killer cells. 
and and once and what uh, interferon gamma does is it activates macrophages and the way interferon gamma uh, functions it is primarily through induction of expression of several immune uh, genes. For example, transport associated with antigen processing C2TA which is important um, is which is an important transcription factor for MHC class 2, uh, NOS2, GP91 FOX, the NOS2 is important in the production of nitric oxide, GP91 FOX is important in production of superoxide radicals and this is these two are uh, ones that we will uh, we will see a little bit later. Um, interferon gamma is a potent inducer of MHC class 1 and MHC class 2 expression. So, once the MHC molecules are increased, the chances of peptides uh, um, that uh, derive from pathogens are also increased because overall the production of MHC molecules uh, increase. This is, this is especially important during inflammatory conditions during infections. Um, it is a key cytokine in resisting microbial infections and it modulates a T cell uh, a T helper differentiation. Perhaps the most important role of uh, interferon gamma is seen in patients where um, inoculation of BCG which is uh, a live vaccine uh, given to um, uh, prevent um, uh, tuberculosis um, and if this live vaccine is given to children that lack interferon gamma. Uh, interferon or its receptor IL-12 or IL-12 uh, receptor, it results in bacteremia known as BCGosis. So, one of the primary roles of um, interferon um, uh, gamma is in boosting up of immunity against intracellular pathogens. Okay. So, there are other types of molecules and we will briefly mention uh, or go over the different other types of molecules, one of which are the collectins and these are calcium dependent lectins. What do we mean by lectins? These are sugar binding proteins that, uh, um, re that recognize pathogen associated molecular patterns okay? um, and these are important because they are involved in direct opsonization. opsonization if you remember is the process by which there is enhanced phagocytosis um, of opsonized uh, uh, bacteria or microbes, neutralization, agglutination, complement activation and phagocytosis to curb microbial growth. There are different collectin members um, and if you remember the mannose binding lectin uh, um, is an important uh, um, is an acute phase protein that means it is produced rapidly during, uh, during uh, the inflammation and it is also important for uh, complement activation uh, is a member of the collectin family. Uh, two of the members of the collecting family namely surfactant protein A and surfactant protein D are well characterized to play an important host response in the lung. So, these are ways by which these are different proteins that are produced by the host in order to um, be able to tackle different types of microbes because we are constantly under attack. Um, we had discussed antimicrobial peptides uh, in the previous class and we will again go over some important aspects of it. Um, these are uh, these represent one of the first line of defense in epithelial surfaces and this is especially true in the intestinal or the gut lumen. Um, uh, and um, you will also remember that TLR and the IMD uh, pathway activation in Drosophila results in production of antimicrobial uh, peptides for example, Drosomycin which is antifungal and Drosin and Dipterin which is antibacterial. Um, TLR activation is thought to increase uh, cytokine production in others in mammals, but in case of Drosophila the main role has been shown to be in production of antimicrobial uh, peptides. Okay. So, um, there are different families of antimicrobial peptides, you have defensins uh, which are uh, small cationic uh, um, antimicrobial peptides. Um, and defensins are, are produced by, nitro, uh, by, by neutrophils, macrophages and penet cells. Penet cells are present in the intestine and they are potent sources of, uh, of our defensins. Um, Catalysid um, they are produced as large precursors and then they are trimmed uh, to produce these uh, antimicrobial peptides and they are found on the surface of gastric uh, intestinal cells. The other one is lysozyme and lysozyme um, as you um, should know um, it is the first enzyme and the second protein to be crystallized. It hydrolyzes uh, uh, N-acetyl glucosamine and uh, N-acetyl muramic acid bond uh, which is present in several uh, bacteria. Uh, lysozyme is present in our tear secretions um, and uh, other, other, um, uh, um, uh, other uh, fluids and it helps in, um, in cleavage uh, of, of uh, bacteria or lysing of bacteria in a non-specific manner. 
So um, there have been um, uh, uh, for so once uh, once people started working on defensins, uh, what was shown is that these are small peptides and they are able to insert themselves into microbial membranes and cause their lysis. What has been shown is um, uh, is that uh, their uh, direct antimicrobial action was well known. What people are beginning to appreciate now is that uh, uh, defensins also play a role in, uh, in host immunity. So, for example, in antiviral defense in the act both on the virus as well as on the host cells. Um, they have uh, been shown to have chemotactic activity for T cells, monocytes, immature um, dendritic cells and they induce cytokine production um, by monocytes and epithelial cells. Okay. So, this is an example to show you uh, the role of uh, uh, human beta defensins during rhinovirus infection. So, over here you have rhinovirus infection, this is uh, um, it is uh, uh, it is affecting this mucosal epithelial cells and this is produced in response to double stranded RNA intermediate that is present. Um, and if you have poly IC which was uh, which is used uh, as an artificial uh, um, uh, instead of the double strand intermediate you use poly IC and activation via TLR3 that also results in production of the human beta defense in 2 and 3. Um, now, um, so that is essentially that was um, that was shown uh, um, whatever I said over there is written over here. Um, but in case of another uh, viral infection, in this case HIV, um, the production of human beta defense in 2 and 3 does not require viral replication. So, you have uh, you know uh, situations in which uh, in some viruses you need viral replication for production of these defensins, in other viruses you do not need uh, this, uh, but nevertheless they play an important role um, in antiviral immunity. Yeah. Okay. I just need the battery, Sorry. maybe okay. it may go and <laughs> okay. that is right, All right. Uh, it's precautionary. Out of, uh, uh, yeah, from the previous okay. sentence or something like that. No problem. We can stop in the middle also. Yeah. Okay, that's not a problem. So I think you're feeling nervous when you get a bitter in picture. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's okay. This is better okay. for me. If I see myself, I get nervous. What I'll do, sir, I'll make you uh, in the hmm. corner. We'll make little bigger picture. That that that's, that's fine. I mean, you you know what you have over there is fine. All right. Okay, so as I was saying, so um, uh, the production of uh, human uh, uh, beta defense in uh, two and three in some cases uh, requires uh, the production of an RNA um, intermediate, and in some cases, and viral replication, and whereas in other cases it does not require. Nevertheless, um, the defensins play an important role in antimicrobial um, immunity and this was an example to show uh, you a role of these. <coughs> this is a lysozyme, um, again it is uh, it's highly active against gram positive uh, um, species mainly because of the, the, the part that it cleaves the muramyl uh, peptide bond uh, is present uh, primarily in gram positive. Um, and there are um, other uh, means also. So, they activate bacterial autolysense, they result in bacterial aggregation um, and so on and so um, they play important antimicrobial roles. Um, the other ones are the catalysidins. Remember the catalysidins are produced as larger precursors and they get trimmed down um, over here and catalysidins play an important role um, in the intestinal lumen and they are present on the surface of gastric intestinal cells. Um, Lactoferrin is a globular glycoprotein and it is present in secretions of the saliva tears etc. Uh, it is present in the highest amounts in colostrum. So, why is colostrum so important? Colostrum is important because it is the first milk that babies drink after birth and it is possible that lactoferrin is playing an important um, uh, antimicrobial role and because it is helping the baby in uh, fighting uh, immunity because once the babies are born they are more susceptible, they do not have their own immune system um, of their own and they rely a lot in the mother, um, uh, their immune um, response from their, from their mother. So, may, perhaps for the initial few uh, months lactoferrin may be playing an important role because it is present in very high amounts in colostrum which is in uh, is the first milk that is produced after, after birth. 
Lactoferrin is also released uh, from uh, neutrophils um, and uh, respiratory tract uh, epithelium. Um, it has multiple roles. It is anti-inflammatory, um, antiviral, uh, anti-LPS, anti-biofilm. And biofilm is important because of what happens in some cases, bacteria form um, from these film-like structures. So, they form a sort of a, uh, a colony of their own in different tissues uh, and, and these biofilms are highly resistant to antimicrobial drugs. Um, so, lactoferrin um, has this antibiofilm property which is, uh, which is uh, very useful. This is a list of different uh, viruses that are susceptible um, to uh, lactoferrin. Um, and uh, this slide um, summarizes the different roles of lactoferrin. So, basically it has, it is a, a fungicidal which means like for example, it is shown as against candida. It has anti-viral uh, roles, HIV, CMV is shown over here. It has anti-inflammatory uh, because um, it uh, is anti-LPS. Um, uh, um, it is also um, important for bacterial killing. And most importantly, it has antibiofilm properties which make it important because you can see that this is a film, uh, you know, a film like structure that the, the microbes are sort of developing which makes them very resistant to treatment with antibiotics so on. So, the antibiofilm uh, property of lactoferrin is very useful. Okay. Uh, during the um, uh, studies on the signal transduction of TLRs, uh, we had uh, shown uh, importantly the activation of NF kappa B. This uh, NF kappa B uh, and the NF kappa B equivalent in a drosophila uh, uh, is you know, the cascade is the signal transduction cascade is almost similar. So, um, for TLR, for toll, uh, toll um, activation and toll like receptor activation in mammals, uh, NF kappa B uh, is playing an important role. So, you can see the conservation of both the receptor, the signal transduction and especially an important transcription factor like NF kappa B. And it tells you about the conserved signaling and processes uh, between um, in innate immune uh, during in, in innate immunity in uh, lower organisms as well as higher organisms such as mammals. Um, so, NF kappa B was first described as a nuclear factor a long time back. Um, at that time, it was shown to be important in transcription of the immunoglobulin kappa chain in B cells and hence the name NF kappa B. Uh, subsequently, it has been shown um, to be important in production of wide variety of, uh, of, um, uh, of molecules, especially those related to uh, inflammation. Um, so, for example, in production of cytokines, acute phase proteins, adhesion proteins, NF kappa B plays an important, uh, important role. Um, what is shown over here is the signal transduction pathway. So, NF kappa B is usually present in the cytosol and it is associated with another protein known as inhibitor kappa B which is shown over here. Um, so, you have NF kappa B and I kappa B in this complex. Upon signaling, what happens is that there is ubiquitination of inhibitor kappa B and degradation of the inhibitor. So, as a result of which and this, uh, this degradation is via the 26S proteasomal pathway and you have um, over here what is shown as the activated NF kappa B. It now, um, once NF kappa B is activated, it can now go from the cytosol into the nucleus where you can bind to its particular cognate binding uh, sites in front of promoters and turn off transcription of several genes. And what is shown over here is apoptotic factors, cytokines, cell cycle regulators, so on and so forth. So, this pathway of activation of NF kappa B is important and uh, it is very important for students to um, understand this particular pathway. Remember, the NF kappa B activation pathway is again conserved between Drosophila and, and mammals um, and the signals uh, are also conserved for this activation which is the, the, the toll and the IMD pathway resulting in activation of the Drosophila NF kappa B whereas, um, in mammals it is the TLR and of the NF kappa B uh, uh, pathway and it results in a wide variety of uh, responses, a very important concept for uh, students. So, this is shown over here um, NF kappa B it results in transcriptional activation and you have synthesis are now of several immune related molecules. You have reactive oxygen uh, intermediates, antimicrobial peptides, cytokines, chemokines, addition molecules, acute phase proteins and so on. This is just a partial list, but the NF kappa B 
is a super tran uh, transcription factor. It turns on several different molecules. Um, one of the ones that uh, was shown over there uh, was the induction of uh, reactive oxygen species and what I will do here is to discuss the importance of reactive oxygen and nitrogen species in innate, in innate immunity. Over here um, uh, ROI and RNI play an important, a very important role in innate immunity and the cells that uh, are mainly responsible for these are the neutrophils which, uh, um, uh, which, uh, which rely mainly on um, the reactive oxygen intermediates and macrophages which rely mainly on the, uh, on the uh, reactive nitrogen intermediates. However, the two pathways can converge together to form a potent oxidant which is peroxynitrite and I will go over this a little bit. Uh, slowly. So, you, uh, you have oxygen which is converted by uh, NADPH oxidase. Now, NADPH, NADPH oxidase needs to be assembled in the membrane upon activation. Once it is assembled, it can uh, form um, superoxide and the superoxide is highly potent. Um, it can be converted into hydrogen peroxide or it can combine together with nitric oxide to form peroxynitrite which is a potent oxidant. Um, and then these are the um, uh, uh, um, the hydrogen peroxides can go on um, uh, to form um, uh, hydroxyl radicals um, and they are these will be a part of the reactive oxygen um, uh, intermediates. Uh, the other one are the reactive nitrogen um, intermediates and here for uh, the production of nitric oxide arginine is the donor is the uh, nitrogen donor it combines over here and you have uh, nitric oxide synthase which is responsible for the production of nitric oxide. Now, in the body there are three main types of nitric oxide synthase. Um, you have the E NOS which is the endothelial NOS, the neuronal NOS, N NOS and then you have the inducible NOS. For the purpose of this class and especially with respect to the immune system, uh, what we are referring to, uh, to is the inducible or, immunology, uh, or immunological one or the, um, the um, uh, I NOS or commonly known as NOS2 which is shown over here. Now, uh, what happens with nitric oxide? It is it can combine as shown over here with uh, with uh, uh, with um, superoxide to form uh, peroxynitrite, which is a extremely potent oxidant. Um, but um, um, nitric oxide on its own has a lot of roles uh, too. Uh, the main one um, uh, that was initially shown was activation of guanylate cyclase resulting in the production of a cyclic GMP and this cyclic GMP will have its own roles. Uh, um, and uh, the activation of guanylate cyclase is because of nitrosylation of heme which is present in the active site of this particular enzyme. The other way by which uh, nitric oxide function so is by an S nitrosylation of uh, proteins. So, SNO uh, which is a cysteine and then SNO. So, that is uh, that's, uh, how uh, it nitrosylates different proteins for example, hemoglobin, glutathione, RAS signaling proteins so on and so forth. So, uh, so this is an important uh, way by which uh, um, RO um, the reactive nitrogen intermediates and the reactive um, oxygen intermediates play an important role. Um, and remember these are potent molecules and they would kill um, uh, different uh, microbes that are ingested and often the cells also themselves get killed and which are then subsequently cleared off by the process of phagocytosis. So, um, the cells sort of not only kill microbes, but they might get uh, themselves killed because of uh, production of these radicals and then ultimately the body is saved because uh, of uh, uh, the fact that the microbes are killed and then uh, the debris and all are cleared off uh, later. Okay. Um, and uh, important, uh, um, uh, important molecules in the inflammatory process are prostaglandins um, and uh, they are derived from uh, fatty acids, arachidonic acid is an important one and they play an important, uh, they play important physiological roles for example, in pain, fever, inflammation, so on. The enzyme that is responsible for production of uh, prostaglandins are cyclooxygenase, you have COX-1 and COX-2. Um, and which are present in, um, in uh, blood vessels, stomach, um, kidneys. COX-1 is responsible for the basal production of uh, prostaglandins and the increased production due to stimulation is uh, done by COX-2. Um, the receptors for, pro pro for prostaglandins are surface cell surface G coupled receptors. Now, the importance of prostaglandins comes into focus by the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, um, drugs and which uh, several of us take whenever we have headaches, pains, we take aspirin, ibuprofen, uh, naproxen, so on. These are belong to the category of um, NSAIDs. So, um, and these and the way it functions is that they are inhibitors of COX. 
Uh, now, aspirin is particularly important because not only is it an inhibitor of COX-1, uh, it also reduces platelet uh, aggregation as shown and these uh, reduces adverse cardiovascular um, events. Um, and for heart patients often they, they, the doctors uh, prescribe aspirin and now you know what is the mechanism of action because it reduces platelet aggregation and uh, you know uh, the, uh, and reduces the risk of adverse uh, cardiovascular events. So, um, aspirin has two roles, one is a COX-1 inhibitor and also reduction of platelet aggregation. Now, once you have uh, the inflammatory process, um, anything that goes up needs to come down because remember, if the activation keeps on in a sustained manner, it uh, results in problems uh, for to the cells uh, and to the host. Um, sepsis is a good example of that, where you have so much activation of immune cells that it becomes very difficult to control. Uh, um, uh, control uh, the process and ultimately it leads to multi-organ failure and, uh, and death. So, uh, in the immune response whatever goes up, if the immune response is induced it needs to have some regulatory mechanisms by which it can be reduced. Um, and this comes, um, uh, this brings us to an important aspect which is down modulation of inflammation or down modulation of the inflammatory um, uh, uh, response. So, with inflammation, uh, um, you know, um, anti-inflammatory processes are also induced. For example, anti-inflammatory cytokines, you have TGF beta, um, IL-1, um, IL-4, um, IL-10, IL these are well known anti-inflammatory cytokines. Uh, some hormones also play an important role, for example, glucocorticoids and these are um, produced by the adrenal glands and they are anti-inflammatory, they are useful in case of allergies, asthma um, uh, and, uh, and so on. In, um, in case of heightened immune reactions uh, as observed in um, case of autoimmune diseases, sometimes glucocorticoids are also uh, prescribed. Um, the other way, um, once you have debris, they need to be cleared off is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is apoptosis and um, uh, this, um, uh, uh, so macrophages are often responsible for recognizing um, apoptotic cells um, because of the expression of eat me flag. So, these cells that are, un that are undergoing apoptosis, they express certain cell surface receptors, these are recognized and then they are, um, they are phagocytosed by macrophages. Um, one of the eat me flags um, is phosphatidylserine, uh, which is um, usually present inside, but in apoptotic cells, it's present on the cell surface, and this can be uh, recognized using um, um, NXN um, uh, five, uh, which binds to phosphatidylserine. Um, now, this particular assay is useful in detection of apoptotic cells. So, uh, as uh, if you wish to look at um, cells undergoing apoptosis, often you can look at the surface expression of NXN5, which is a marker for um, uh, for apoptotic cells. Now, in terms of TLR um, induced responses, again uh, there are different mechanisms in place to reduce uh, TLR activation because uh, microbial uh, infection is often associated uh, with uh, TLR responses. So, um, uh, initially I had uh, shown you um, the role of uh, NOD2 in regulation of TLR um, uh, responses and it is possible that, uh, um, that uh, NOD2 mutations and may explain as to how NOD2 mutations lead to Crohn's disease. Uh, now, another molecule shown a uh, TOLIP. Now, TOLIP was shown up in my previous uh, 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 classes uh, lecture uh, slides on um, on TLR, uh, but I did not explain it because there was not uh, sufficient uh, time to explain each and every molecule. But TOLIP inhibits IRK and this uh, IRK uh, activity is associated with uh, TLR. So, again, so you have IRK activities associated with TLR, so you have a regulator of this particular activity, so you can reduce TLR activation. Non-pathogenic bacteria also reduce um, inflammation and in fact they block inflammation induced by pathogenic uh, bacteria. Um, you will remember that in our gut we have you know uh, lots of um, non-pathogenic bacteria and uh, there are different mechanisms in the gut uh, uh, too to take care of uh, these huge no load of bacteria that uh, are living in the, in the gut. Uh, the peroxisome proliferator activated uh, receptor PPRA gamma, now uh, peroxisomal proliferator activated uh, receptor, these are nuclear uh, um, uh, nuclear uh, transcription factors which get activated 
and uh, they lead to wide variety of responses. Um, in this particular case, uh, peroxisome proliferator activated it results in increased production of peroxisomes and that is why the name per peroxisome proliferator activated receptor. And these might reduce inflammation, these are these have some role in inflammation and uh, by increasing nuclear export of the relay subunits of NF kappa B. So, NF kappa B goes into the, the nucleus once it is activated and what this could be doing is that it is exporting this uh, NF kappa B um, back into the cytosol and by increasing the export of this you are reducing activation. So, there are different mechanisms in place by which uh, uh, down modulation of responses can occur. Uh, the other example is shown by the A20 ubiquitin ligase which, uh, which uh, down modulates uh, TLR dependent responses. Um, the other uh, molecule which is well studied is uh, SOX1 which is a suppressor of cytokine uh, signaling. It is an uh, inhibitor of uh, the JAK-STAT pathway uh, which is important in signaling via the interferons. Um, Okay, one of the one of uh, uh, the examples of down modulation of inflammation um, is uh, the uh, the example that is shown over here is the expression of uh, uh, SRP alpha, which is an inhibitor tyrosine uh, motif uh, containing receptor on macrophages. Um, now, usually binding of this to CD um, forty seven uh, results in down modulation of phagocytosis. However, as uh, uh, as RBCs age, they down uh, regulate a CD forty five, and these uh, these aged RBCs are rapidly phagocytosed by uh, macrophages. So, this is an example again of phagocytosis about molecules that play an important role in phagocytosis and how you can down modulate um, the uh, responses. Um, I will briefly now talk about the relationship between the innate and the adaptive immune system. Um, the NK cells produce interferon gamma these activate macrophages and once macrophages get activated they will present and process more efficiently to T cells and consequently they will modify your uh, T cell responses um, which can may be of Th1, Th2 and so you can see a role where NK cells which are innate um, uh, which play a role in innate immunity are also playing are modifying the adaptive immune response. The second one is dendritic cells. Some dendritic cells um, uh, produce large amounts of type 1 interferons um, in response to viral infections and these have been shown to play not only an important role in reducing viral replication, but they also result in increased numbers of viral uh, specific T cells. So, again you it is a it is a case by which uh, a classical uh, innate uh, uh, cell is modulating the adaptive uh, response. Um, a, a fine example of uh, immunity or, or this interrelationship between adaptive and uh, innate is seen in the gut because in the gut you have huge numbers of bacteria in there and the gut is uh, plays uh, an important role because you have this gut associated lymphoid tissue and the upper bowel has less a number of uh, bacteria, but uh, within the, uh, needs to it uh, reacts to dietary antigens. Whereas the lower ones, in addition to the dietary antigens, you have um, huge um, uh, commensal uh, organisms living there. Over here, you have uh, in the intestine, you have specialized patches of organized lymphoid tissue known as the Peyer's patches. Yeah, and among the important cells which uh, present, uh, uh, which uh, uptake. Uh, which is responsible for uptake of antigens and then giving it to the dendritic cells and the other cells uh, uh, in the lymphoid tissue are known as M cells. And these are epithelial cells, but which play an important role in this uh, process. The IgA that is present in large numbers in the gut lumen is also an important role. In fact, mice that cannot uh, produce IgA have much higher numbers of gut bacteria. So, the gut immunity or the gut uh, uh, gut uh, um, uh, process uh, that uh, is, is very important because of this fine interaction between innate and adaptive uh, arms. Okay, um, I will also briefly discuss how plants and uh, innate uh, immunity uh, uh, function. So, what about plants? We have been discussing animals so far. So, before ending I will just briefly mention the different mechanisms by which plants also have it. Um, so, plants uh, have uh, and so plants are also susceptible to viruses, bacterial pathogens so on. So, how do they deal with, uh, with this? So, first is by the production of antimicrobial products for example, phytoalexins, uh, salicylates, antimicrobial peptides, enzymes, chitinase. Um, so, they also can shut down transcription and they do so uh, by um, the DICER pathway. So, it will it will turn transcription down um, 
then you have what's known as the resistant uh, loci or the R loci which allows recognition of specific effectors. Several of the R loci proteins contain uh, LRR which is the leucine rich repeat uh, um, uh, domains in their proteins um, and, um, uh, and which is an important uh, um, mechanism. So, you can see that the R factors and the LRRs uh, and the relationship there is some commonality that one can see over here. An important response um, by which plants take care is through the production of what is known as the hypersensitive response which is upon infection the cells around that particular infected tissue they die off. And how they die off is not clear, but it is possible that uh, plants are known to contain caspase related uh, um, uh, proteases and uh, whether these are playing an important role in our needs further studies. But the hypersensitive response is clearly an important uh, uh, way by which um, plants handle uh, these uh, 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 these uh, uh, the, the infection by pathogens. I will now briefly summarize and just uh, go over uh, some of the main aspects that we have covered today. Um, first is that there are we have, what we have tried to do is study different aspects of the innate response. You have the complement activation. Um, we, have, we have looked at complement activation. There are different pathways. There are three different pathways, the classical, uh, the alternate and uh, the lectin uh, pathway uh, by which they can be activated. Um, and uh, you have the you have receptors that are involved. Uh, you have the TLRs, you have the nodes, you have the complement receptors, you have the addition receptors. We also studied the important roles of interferons, especially the type one, type two interferons. Um, IL eight, which is an important chemokine, which is an important neutrophil attractant. CCR five, which is an important for HIV infections. Um, effectors, the reactive oxygen uh, intermediates, the reactive nitrogen intermediates. Here, FOX uh, NADPH uh, oxidase is important for it. Reactive nitrogen uh, intermediates, NOS2 is the key um, enzyme that is responsible for production of nitric oxide. We have also looked at uh, down modulation of innate responses, uh, the production of uh, anti inflammatory cytokines like TGF beta, IL10, IL4, um, and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you have uh, further ways by which uh, these um, the production of a, of a glucocorticoids mm, um, and uh, so that you can suppress immunity. You have different proteins for example that will uh, suppress immunity for example the ATA20 ubiquitin ligase, um, the TOLIP which is an inhibitor or um, SOX1 which is an inhibitor of the, the JAK-STAT signaling pathway which is important by which uh, side, uh, interferon signal. We also uh, um, studied the link between innate and adaptive immunity, especially the role of NK cells in producing interferon gamma and modulating T cell responses. Dendritic cells, some dendritic cells produce high amounts of uh, type 1 interferons and which in turn um, uh, affects uh, uh, the antiviral uh, activity and the production of antiviral uh, T cells. Now, most importantly, I would uh, like to conclude with uh, 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 a study of four diseases and a sort of a, a review of these. Um, so, NOD2 is an intracellular sensor. It has been shown to play a role um, in or it is associated with Crohn's disease which is an inflammatory bowel disease. So, um, mutations in NOD2 result in increased inflammation of, uh, of the bowel and it is possible that uh, NOT2 is playing an important regulator of uh, the T cell responses. Um, CD18 is the common beta subunit, it is important for adhesion, leukocyte adhesion deficiency. Um, then you have mannose binding lectin, common opsonic defect which is very which is quite common um, and it is important in opsonization and complement activation. FOX um, uh, which is NADPH oxidase and uh, the production and uh, its association with chronic glandomatous disease. So, if you do not have uh, uh, NADPH oxidase or your mutations in NADPH oxidase which are not functional, you have chronic glandomatous disease which results in recurrent bacterial infections. Overall, uh, what uh, these two lectures innate immunity uh, have uh, shed light on, on the cells, the mechanisms by which our innate cells play an important role. So, they are not only act as the border security force, but they are important in modulating the adaptive immune response. Thank you.